Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Becomes the Legendary Pokémon Master together with Ria's Gremory Part 2. Before we start please go support Andres Felipe Solano Say for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this essay is a male in this story. Chapter 8. Explanations and Talks. After the declarations of love between the two, Issei and Ria's would be in a pleasant situation for both of them. Issei. Oh god you're amazing. Ria's. Yes, please don't stop. Having mutual hexwell relations, she was in a doggy pose while Issei penetrated her forcefully. The feeling of pleasure could not be described in words, even though Ria's was a virgin recently, she got used to it very quickly and was being bold. Ria's. Let me please you smiles. Issei. Wow how beautiful. Ria's. You always like them, right? Issei's eyes admired her naked body, the moonlight perfectly illuminated that body beautifully, he saw her soft white skin, his hands rested on her chest, he squeezed them tightly while Ria's moaned, in turn moving upwards. Down with Issei's penis stuck in her vagina. Issei. Ria's. Ria's. Issei. They were so excited that the stimulus partially activated their transformation, but that did not stop them, on the contrary, they did it with more strength and intensity. Ria's held onto Issei's body with her two legs, while she had her arms around his neck and kissed her, while he penetrated her. It was so strong that she literally had hex in motion, Issei's feet walked as he penetrated her and collided with the trees breaking them in the process. They continued like this until they reached a river, where Issei and Ria's finally came at the same time, both falling into the water. Their bodies separated and they stood face to face, naked, they saw each other under the crystal clear water, while the moon illuminated them to end up giving each other a big kiss closing the moment. In the morning. Issei would wake up next to the river with Ria's body naked next to him. Issei. Looks to the other side. He looked at all the destruction the two had caused by that act of love. Buja. Well I think they went a bit too far. Issei. Maybe so. Ria's. Issei. Issei. Ria's. Ria's. Kisses him on the cheek. Issei. Blushes. Ria's. It was great last night. Issei. W heavens. Ria's. Haha. <laughs> Issei. By the way, Ria's. Ria's. Are you? Issei. Where are our clothes? Ria's. That's a good question. Issei. I'm going for her. Ria's. I'll wait for you here. On the way there and back, they would both take a shower together in the river, while they talked, Ria's washed Issei's back. Issei. You know, Ria's, we have to think about what to do now that things have gotten complicated. Ria's. Those bastards will come for us, right? Issei. That may be so, those bastards are from the cow's rocket. Ria's. Do you know them? Issei. A long time ago they were called Team Rocket, before we left Kanto I met a friend, he told me that they were on the verge of the end, but that they merged with another organization, and now they are cow's rocket, things can be complicated now. Ria's. You didn't plan on telling me. Issei. From my point of view I thought we wouldn't end up getting involved with them, but that's how it was. Ria's. Sighs next time tell me things like you are. Issei. I know and I'm sorry. Ria's. I apologized. Issei. Really that easy? Ria's. What can I say, I'm a little soft with my boyfriend. Issei. Sure. Ria's. Do you have a plan in mind? Issei. They don't know about us, they have no information or names, basically we will be more than difficult to find, for now we don't have to worry if we keep the energy of a legendary suppressed. Ria's. You should teach me how to do that. Ria's would finish washing Issei's back and then sit down. Issei. We will train on the way. Ria's. Issei can you wash me? Issei. With gusto. He would quickly put his hands on her and wash her breasts carefully. Makeup. Ah. Issei. El I'm sorry. Ria's. Don't worry it doesn't bother me. When we finished washing we stayed floating on the water talking, we were in no hurry to leave. Issei. First, to get your Pokémon out of your body, you must concentrate the energy of that Pokémon, gather it all in one point, then say a simple order such as come out Luja and it will come out. Ria's. That's all I thought it was more complex you know more difficult. Issei. No, that's not easy. The difficult thing is the fusion of movements. You must take into account the characteristics of the movement, the forms it can take, above all the physical and mental effort it expends. The slightest failure when performing it can leave you with broken bones or dead. Ria's. That doesn't sound good. Issei. As I said, that guy Matt was an experienced warrior, he knew how to use the fusion of movements, but you have more talent than him. Ria's. Really? Issei. Well, as you told me, you created a movement, a power just for yourself, there is no way that that is something basic. Ria's. 
I was in the middle of a battle where there weren't many chances, it was risky, and in the end I ended up captured. They say. But even so, he didn't come out victorious, you're very skilled. There he is. That's very comforting, thank you Issei. They say. By the way Iris City is still recovering from the damage, but fortunately there were no deaths, except for the old man killed by Matt of course. There he is. I should have reacted. They say. No, you acted well, you faced the enemy when he revealed all his cards that allowed you to handle the situation more easily, it was the right thing to do. There he is. Takes her hand thanks. They say. Smiles well, let's hope we don't have any problems in the future. Elsewhere. In a large building in the middle of an empty island, inside a huge office, Gray was kneeling in front of who seemed to be his boss. Gray. This is how my report ends, Mr. Alpha. Alpha. I understand that they basically failed to capture the legendary Pokémon, and in total it was a loss of five legendary Pokémon, taking into account the prisoner who was released. Gray. I'm sorry for my mistake, Mr. Alpha. Alpha. Don't worry Gray. Gray. What but sir, it was one of the biggest losses. Alpha. Well it was the headquarters fault for not giving you complete information, plus they were attacked by unknown enemies, as one of the leaders of this organization I understand the complications happen especially with this type, if I have to say something it is that I appreciate your trial you brought the mega stone in turn you saved the scientists. You kept the losses to the minimum possible. Gray. I appreciate your understanding. Alpha. Also the clock operation is launched. Gray. Shocked L they managed to catch him. Alpha. Smiles it is correct, in fact I signed the contract personally, that means that the losses related to your mission are minimal or non-existent. Gray. I thought the probability of capturing him was one of the lowest. Alpha. Everything gives way in the end. Gray. And he's already planned his next move. Alpha. Of course, but you have to go, the headquarters sent me a letter, they need you in another region. Gray. Will you continue with the plan alone? Alpha. I already have the contract with the Pokémon, and I also propose the plan, as the head in charge of both the Kanto and Johto branches, it is my duty to carry out the plan until the end. Gray. Understood sir, I wish you luck. Alpha. Okay, please leave. Gray. Yes sir. Gray would leave the office leaving Alpha alone. Alpha. Then it's time to progress with the plan. But the say and Rias. They had dressed and set off to a new destination in Johto, along the way they observed the calming landscape of the forest. They say. By the way, have you tried using Ho-Oh's powers? Rias. No, I haven't seen the need to use them either. They say. I understand. Rias. By the way, they say. They say. Yes. Rias. I wanted to ask you why when you transformed you didn't adopt a form more similar to that of Luja, in fact the change closest to the resemblance to your Pokémon was the white clothes and hair. They say. What's that about? Rias. I don't know, I was just curious. They say. Well, the transformations are not that easy, in fact I think the form you adopt depends on the trainer's wishes. Rias. It depends on us. They say. To make it simpler I will tell you, even if more than one trainer has Pikachu, not all of them will look the same, the reason for this is due to our desires. For example, Luja, it is said that with a flap of its wings, it can collapse a building. So when I made a contract with Luja I thought that if when I transformed I lost my hands and they were replaced by his huge wings, it would be somewhat uncomfortable for me, although if he gained more strength, I would see it as inefficient. But when it came to transforming I kept my strength and my arms, the most noticeable change was always my clothes and hair, lighter skin, etc. I think that the transformation seeks a state where the user is comfortable and also optimizes the power of that Pokémon with its way of fighting. Luja. Certainly that can be true, you don't need fancy wings or horns, if you are going to use our powers, you should feel comfortable with it. Ho oh, oh. From the beginning the fusion of humans and Pokémon has favored you more, being able to create new things based on ours, being free of limitations, such as only using four movements, without having to return to the Pokémon world to be able to use others. Rias. Then with a Veltomi. I say. I think that that way is the one that your body and mind feel most comfortable, and it also takes advantage of all the potential of a Veltal. And. This is how it is, for example, when you use my power, your clothes become smaller and flashier, but lighter, your arms become red, but strong like my wings, and your hands become claws. They say. With the lighter clothing you gain freedom of movement, which translates into more speed and agility with the claws you gain more damage when attacking and holding, with those red arms you gain more attack power, basically you use a flying sinister type of Elta like someone with quick but deadly attacks. Rias. Wow I didn't know that. They say. 
That's right, the transformations depend on the trainer, some are very showy, others, on the other hand, can't be too showy, in fact it even seems like he simply put on new clothes, but when it comes to combat, those changes in the transformations are seen for what they are, and the usefulness that those changes entail. There he is. The only thing I don't understand is why it affects clothes. Ho oh, oh. Pokemon are always naked, we don't wear clothes, even if you were naked, what you call clothes will appear. There he is. What do you mean? Ho oh. oh. Ask yourself, are you really wearing clothes when you transform? Rias. What would I be using if not? Ho oh, oh. To us. Rias. Shocked what? Ho oh, oh. Why are you surprised you laugh, you should know you have already transformed many times. I say. What he says is true, the characteristic color of my Lugia transformation, it is actually the Lugia himself, that change of clothes is the Pokemon adapting to our bodies. Rias. So basically by transforming we even change our clothes. I say. Yes, actually we are using Pokemon as clothing, as armor rather. Ho oh, oh. That's right, in Issei's case, since his body doesn't feel comfortable with Luja's wings, they disappear, but the strength of the wings that are introduced into his arms is preserved. Rias. That doesn't hurt you. Luja. You are considered for caring about us, but no, on the contrary when doing it and wrapping your bodies, we inside you are in a subspace in your body that simulates our favorite habitat or our rest area, in my case the deep sea. Rias. Then if they don't need clothes how do they change the clothes and then the clothes go back to normal? Ho oh, oh. Those clothes you wear are made from natural resources, for example silk, linen, cotton, leather and wool etc. Of course, not all of those resources are natural, but having even one allows us to change over with your clothes, and if the clothes are not made from natural resources, then they are destroyed, and when the transformation is over, you will appear naked. I say. Most Pokemon are beings that love and live in nature, some of them are nature itself in person. Rias. Now I think I see everything from a broader point of view. They say. Everything has its logic in this universe, I once met a scientist who told me that some things have their own logic and laws, although it seems impossible for us, it is possible for them because their physical laws or their logic are different from those of us. Rias. It helped me a lot. Thanks I say. They say. You're welcome although yes if the transformation adapts around what I said before also keep in mind that with each Pokemon it is different, that said do not expect to have the wings of Ho-Oh on your arms like with a Veltal, it may be very different from what you think. Rias. I understand. When they stop they could see a big city ahead, that would be their new destination. They say. Well we arrived at Gears City Smiles. Chapter 9. History. In the Gears City, machines are everywhere, and the most characteristic thing about the city is that every machine is driven by gears inside, the gears in the city make up many things, hence the city gets its name. They say. Well, what do you want to do first? Rias. I heard that Gears City's dishes are really famous, let's explore the food dishes. They say. There better be an ATM nearby, I have to reload the cash. They say went to look for an ATM, and after several minutes he returned. Rias. Did it go well? They say. Yes, fortunately my brother always keeps the account full. Rias. Won't he be upset? They say. No, Vali knows that I have been living at his expense for a long time, and he is rich and has nothing to complain about for a few thousand dollars. Rias. Well, then where are we going? They say. If we want to try the great dishes of the city, I recommend that we look for a place that is very large and luxurious. With those words he quickly entered a luxurious restaurant, the restaurant was beautiful from the hanging chandeliers to the tables, it had eight floors for good views of the city. Waiter. Excuse me, gentlemen. They say. Yes. Waiter. I'm going to ask you to kindly leave. Rias. P.Y. They say. I understand, excuse us dear gentlemen, we will return in the best possible condition. Waiter. I appreciate your understanding young man. Rias. W. Way to say what are you talking about? Issei. Pulls her let's go, laughs. Issei would drag Rias to the exit calmly. Rias. Why was that? Issei. Rias Miram. Rias. Aha what's happening? Issei. Now look at you. Rias. Millimeters I don't understand, the clothes aren't dirty. Issei. It's not the clothes well if it is, I forgot that it's a luxurious restaurant, they don't allow us to enter dressed like that. Rias. Then we should go buy clothes if we want to eat. Issei. Basically, high society has rules if we want to eat in these places, we must follow them whether we like it or not. Rias. I understand. But those words said they went out to look for clothes, a woman was watching them from above the restaurant. Waiter, did any problem happen? Waiter. Not at all, ma'am, everything has been normal. So who are the two of them? Waiter. They are guests. I saw that they did not comply with the dress code. I asked them to kindly leave. 
As they were talking to each other, I heard their names. The boy is Issei and the woman is Rias. I really hope you were kind, even though we have a dress code we must be courteous above all. Waiter. Don't worry, I would never do anything to ruin the restaurant's reputation. I hope so. Waiter. But if you allow me the audacity, I want to ask you something. Forward. Waiter. Why so much interest in them, Madam Yasaka? Yasaka. Millimeters for nothing in particular, just curious. But this say and Rias. These would be in a store trying on clothes in elegant dressing rooms. Rias. It's incredible that we have to do this for a restaurant. They say. I see from your point of view, many important people go to those restaurants, giving them a bad image, such as that anyone can enter dressed as they want is bad for business, public opinion is important, it is what gives them fame and prestige to the place. Rias. I understand that part, but why don't we just go to another restaurant? They say. Millimeters good question. You should have said that before I finally tied my tie, now we will go because we will go. Rias. Okay, let me finish buttoning the dress. They say. Leaves the dressing room I wonder what dress you chose. Rias. Leaves the locker room well, will you tell me how do I look? They say would not respond, he was speechless at the beauty in front of him. They say. With all due respect, every time I see you I want to rip off your clothes. Rias. I guess I'll take that since I look amazing. Both would return to the restaurant, the waiter would calmly observe the young people, and this time he would let them pass without problem. Waiter. What floor do you want to go to? They say. Eight floor. Waiter. I understand. They sat at a table in front of the window, watching the whole city from above. Rias. I can't believe how cool this place is. They say. What are you going to order? Rias. I'm still deciding. They say. Same for me Rias I know this is not the time, but possibly we won't have to take care of the cow's rocket, but rather the government. Rias. They weren't the good guys. They say. I collected information from Matt when you left. Rias. How did you get information from him if you were in the middle of a fight and self-destruct countdown at the base? They say. Courtesy of a Pokemon friend I'll just say that. Rias. I understand and you discovered something that had it related to the government. They say. Better said he was a member of the government, a double agent. Rias. So now we have the countries of the world behind us. They say. Correction, we won't have them until nobody knows, so you either saw nothing or you know nothing. Rias. Oh then I'm calm. They say. For now they won't bother us. Rias. You have experience with them. They say. In the past yes. So to speak, I watched them form. I was present when the idea of naming a cluster of regions or lands, country and I was present when this country became known as Japan. Rias. And in all those cases, how would you describe your encounters? They say. Well difference of opinions, they said that my strength should be to help the world, I said that I was not going to be tied to anything, nor was anyone going to give me orders, so I beat them up. Rias. Because it doesn't surprise me. At that moment the waiter would arrive to take the order. Waiter. Gentlemen, you have already decided what to order. Rias. Yes, I want to try the Buddha jumps over the wall soup. Waiter. Excellent order, noted in you sir. They say. Doggy dog. Waiter. Good order, understood. I'll be back in a few minutes with your orders, gentlemen. The waiter would leave leaving Issei and Rias alone. Rias. By the way, that's what you asked for. Issei. Same as you, one of the ten most expensive food dishes in the world. Rias. But what is a doggy dog? Issei. The most expensive hot dog in the world. Rias. You say that fast food like a hot dog costs a lot of money. Issei. You'll see why. After the indicated time, the waiter and two people brought the covered plates. Waiter. First the lady. This uncovers the first dish. Rias. Incredible. Waiter. The Buddha jumps over the wall soup has its extravagant ingredients, including. Shark fin, abalone ancient mollusks, Japanese mushroom flour, sea cucumber, chicken, yuan ham, pork and ginseng medicinal plants and china dot. Rias. Thanks for the food. At that moment Rias started to eat. Waiter. For the gentleman, a doggy dog. He uncovered the second plate, Rhea stopped to look at it, opening her eyes in amazement and becoming hungrier. They say. Just what I wanted. Waiter. It is called the dragon dog, and its main ingredients are. A sausage bathed in Louis XII cognac, it is covered in fresh lobster, spicy sauce, Kobe beef, a fine and exquisite cut of meat, olive oil and truffles. They say. Rhea's, now do you understand what I was talking about? Rhea's. Definitely. They both devoured their food without a problem. Isaka. Enjoyed your meal guys. 
At that moment a beautiful woman approached them, Issei was struck by her beauty, but he came to his senses immediately and became serious when he saw her, since he did not know what her intentions were. Issei. Looks like we have a guest. Isaka. Nice to meet you. Issei. Nice to meet you, may I know who you are? Isaka. I am the owner of this restaurant, my name is Yusaka. I came to see you because I want new customers to feel comfortable and happy with the service. Issei. Yusaka. For some reason that name sounds familiar to me. Rias. So far the dishes are worth their price. Issei. I say the same. Isaka. It's a pleasure to know that and after your meal have you considered where to go. Rias. Now that you say it, no, do you have somewhere in mind? Isaka. Millimeters let me see, I recommend the Gears City Museum, this one is special. Issei. Special. Isaka. The stories told by the museum are through mechanical works. Issei. Something like a robotic puppet show. Isaka. Basically. Issei. I understand, thanks for your recommendation. Isaka. Don't worry young man, we'll see each other again. She would approach him and give him a kiss on the cheek and then leave. Issei. Blush but what was that? Rias. Terrifying or Issei. Issei. Gulp. Rias. Issei, do you know that woman? Issei. No. Rias. So what was that? Issei. I have no idea. After that I had an argument with Ria so big that we had to leave the restaurant. As time passed, I naturally followed Yusaka's recommendation and went to the museum. The most curious thing was that I found her at the door waiting for us. I knew she was up to something, but I didn't detect any malice. Apparently she had no bad intentions, so I acted happy and normal with her. Which immediately made Ria's angry. Isaka. It seems that they did come. Ria's. Why is he here? Isaka. I thought they needed a guide. Issei. Well, it's very useful, thank you. Rias. I'm sure that was it. Ma'am. Isaka. What are you talking about? I just want to help, after all you have to be kind, not a wild beast, don't you think girl? Sparks immediately flew between the two women. Issei. I can see the lightning between them. Uja. Things are getting interesting. Ho oh, oh. You said it. Why? But as always, the boy is the one who will pay the consequences. Issei. Because yo. Upon entering we could see all kinds of exhibits, among them there were mechanical works with metal figures that moved telling ancient stories. Rias. Issei. Mira. Issei. He. Isaka. This is really interesting. Rias. The story of priestesses and legendary birds, the end of the fight in Kanto. Issei. You have seen Yusaka. Isaka. No, I heard it's a new exhibit they brought in two days ago, but I hadn't had time to see it. Issei. Then let's see what it's about. Issei immediately pressed a button, and the metal figures moved. A long time ago. Once upon a time there were two priestesses of a great and prosperous kingdom, they were revered and loved by all their people. Together they led the kingdom to times of prosperity, however all this ended when they appeared. Three legendary birds called Articuno, Zapdos and Malters, which when in rage destroyed everything. They brought unprecedented disaster to the kingdom, from relentless storms and devastating fire that killed people, to cold winters that froze crops and starved people to death. Two of them knelt in front of a large cliff and prayed for salvation. Then an oracle arrived, the oracle said. The fight of the birds is reaching unprecedented levels of devastation, this was interfering with the creation of the world that Kyager and Groudon were carrying out, and when the battle reaches its limit, everything will be destroyed. The priestesses asked. How can we calm the birds, on their knees they implored the oracle for answers, which he answered, there are only two ways, find the legendary Pokemon Luja, or sacrifice their lives as a price to calm the birds. Without further ado, the priestesses did not know what to do, they did not know where to find Luja, and time was not on their side, they could no longer bear the suffering of their kingdom, so they made the difficult decision to sacrifice their lives to calm the birds. But that in mind they looked at each other and hugged one last time, they offered their lives to calm the birds, since then the birds disappeared, their sacrifice is a memory of what allowed what we know under the name of to be today. Canto. End. After the story will end Ria's approach to say. Ria's. Is say. Issei. Ria's I'm also like you, I didn't know anything about this Luja, what does this mean? Ho oh, oh. I agree, what does this mean? Luja. To tell the truth it is complicated, at that time I was in the deepest part of the sea, I was hurt by another legendary Pokemon, of course I could not help and fulfill my role, also I did not know about this story, I thought that the birds they had calmed down on their own, but it seems that lives were sacrificed. Issei. Leave it like that, it doesn't matter anymore, it's the past. Ria's. What happened to the birds ho oh, don't you know something? Ho oh. 
No human or Pokemon has seen them, it was simply as if they ceased to exist, they did not make a contract either, I am sure of that, since considering the time it would have been known for a long time if they made a contract. Buja. His disappearance is a mystery. Issei. Millimeters. Isaka. It's certainly not a story I like. Rias. Looks at Issei you don't like these kinds of stories either, right? Issei. You guessed it since I was a child I always hated stories with sad endings. Isaka. I can understand your point of view. Rias. The priestesses had names, I would like to know what their names were. Isaka. There is another exhibit nearby, they are stone statues of the two priestesses. Issei. Let's see. When they arrived and saw the stone statues they realized that they had no face, the entire face was blank, there was only a white robe that covered everything. Isaka. According to the information here, it is said that at that time the priestesses did not like to be sculpted in stone, that is why they only partially sculpted the priestesses with clothing and limbs, but nothing detailed. Rias. So they left their faces blank. Isaka. Basically. Issei. Say their names. Isaka. Yes, the priestesses who saved their kingdom were called Akeno Himejima and Ravel Phoenix. Chapter 10. Extreme Danger. In the museum, both Issei and Rias continued to see the other exhibits. Isaka. It was gratifying to come with you, sometimes a woman like me needs a little company. Issei. Do you want us to make a trio? Rias. Hits him in the face stop joking. Isaka. Fufufu I wouldn't object, but it seems like the girl might feel uncomfortable with another girl in bed. Issei. Damn what a shame. Rias. You too pout. Issei. Haha, he joked. Isaka. She really is a very energetic person. Rias. Strangely enough, the two of them already get along well. Issei. What can I say, I have charm for women. Rias. Have they told you that charm is lethal? Issei. Good point. Isaka. How about we go out to dinner tonight, I'll treat you to some great dishes. Issei. I agree. Rias. Well if it's delicious food like the last time, of course. Issei. Nothing in the world could ruin this good atmosphere. Burst. Crack. At that moment an explosion had occurred behind Issei, Rias and Yusaka, pushing them forward and not only destroying the wall, but also damaging the roof, immediately in the museum many soldiers entered, the three of them watched but could not move, because they were crushed by part of the roof that had come off by the explosion. The museum's alarms rang loud and strong. Issei. Cough cough. They are fine. Isaka. Yes. Rias. Yes. But stunned. Also crushed. Issei. So we are all. At that moment a subject had entered through the wall that was blown to pieces by the explosion. Alpha. Soldiers prepare the authorities will take action quickly, defend your position with your lives. Issei. Everyone. Act like you fainted. The two listened to Issei, closed their eyes and kept their heads on the ground. Alpha. Millimeters. Looks at the three it seems there were civilians. He would approach Issei, Rias and Yusaka with a soldier at his side, he would see them crushed by a part of the roof. Soldier. What do we do with them, Mr. Alpha? Alpha. Nothing, they are just third parties in this, you don't have to pay attention to unimportant civilians, if you find more civilians, get them out of here, I don't care if you have to use force. Soldier. Should we get these three out of your sight? Alpha. Leave them there, they are corpses crushed by the concrete, they don't matter, just do what I tell you, and don't let anyone come in here, this will be quick. Soldier. I understand, I'm leaving sir. The soldier would leave Alpha alone, he approached the painting that told the story of the priestesses and the legendary birds. While everything was happening, Issei spoke to the two in a low voice. Issei. Don't make a sudden movement, just watch and keep your voice low, or that guy called Alpha will hear us, looking at his clothes it looks like he's from Cow's Rocket. Isaka. You said Cow's Rocket, you know that infamous organization. Issei. Unfortunately yes, we had the worst encounter, and I see that the rumor of his existence is spreading throughout the world quickly. Rias. What is the plan because it is approaching the painting, maybe they plan to summon legendary Pokemon like in the burned tower. Isaka. I knew it, you were part of the scandal in Ira City. Issei. And I knew that you were not someone so simple. Isaka. You don't know right, you don't even remember. Issei. Remember what? Isaka. For now that doesn't matter I have no bad intentions if that's what you're wondering. Issei. I know, you must have something else in mind, but this is not the time to start talking. Rias. What is that guy doing? Isaka. Seems to be seeing the painting closely. Issei watched him carefully, until he said a few words. Alpha. Ready, I already have at least a precise date and place. Issei. What the hell are you? 
Issei's eyes widened, he was immediately horrified by what he saw, he quickly stopped pretending and stood up running towards Alpha. All because a green light began to illuminate him, Riaz and Yusaka were amazed by his uncautious action to the point that they followed him. Issei. Noo. Alpha. Go ahead Celebi. The green light illuminated everything blinding them, by the time Issei, Riaz and Yusaka opened their eyes, they were in a field of long green grass. Riaz. Where where are we? Yusaka. It doesn't seem to be an illusion something teleported us out of the museum. Issei. Buck. Riaz. Issei, you know what happened, right? Issei. Yes. It was a celebrity. Isaka. Shock celebi, but contracts with them are impossible, and they are also prohibited, even thinking about making one is a taboo among taboos. Uja. I can't believe it. Ho oh, oh. They went too far this time. Why? I agree, this is the limit. Riaz. It's a legendary Pokemon, right? Issei. More than that legendary and unique. Riaz. But why are you so afraid of that Pokemon even the legendary one seem worried? Isaka. It is not just another legendary Pokémon of the bunch, it may be below in some strength values compared to other legendaries, but that Pokémon has a unique power like all the legendaries. Riaz. It is because of that power that we are here. Issei. Not only here where and when Celebi is a Pokémon that can travel in time. When he said those words, he was shocked, he quickly understood the situation. Riaz. That's it. Issei. Its capture was prohibited for everyone, because obviously someone with the ability to travel in time could cause the destruction of the world by altering historical facts, since then for humans and Pokémon Celebi, it became an untouchable Pokémon, a taboo. Riaz. So that guy. Issei. Not only did he break the taboo and force Celebi into a forced contract, he went too far. No one should intervene in the already written story. Doing so will bring consequences. Isaka. Not only did it bring consequences for the world, but for the celeb himself. Riaz. What are you talking about because Celebi is in trouble? Isaka. Celebi, although it is a legendary and unique Pokémon, there is more than one Celebi traveling in the flow of space-time. It is said in a legend that whenever a Celebi travels through time, it is supervised by Dialga. Riaz. Dialga. So that's why Celebi may be in danger. Isay. Tch, yeah. And we get into serious trouble just by being here. Riaz. Then what will happen? Issei. We must know where we are, look for that guy named Alpha, terminate his contract with Celebi by killing him. Riaz. You missed the part about not changing the past to avoid altering the future. Issei. You have seen many funny movies this is not that simple. Riaz. Hey, but we haven't done anything to alter it. Issei. Just by existing or being in the place of a timeline that we should not be in, we are already changing the past. Isaka. Issei is right, the simple fact of stepping on this grass, of walking in this era, with these clothes, already makes us alter the past, the impact would be greater if someone saw us. Riaz. So what do we do about that? Issei. Pray that the future remains with as few changes as possible. Isaka. That guy looked at the painting of the priestesses and the legendary birds, I think he was looking for the date of the events that occurred, his goal may be the legendary birds. Riaz. Plan to use Zalebi's power to fight. Isaka. It does not stand out for being very offensive, and according to my information Celebi is a psychic plant type, of the three birds he is weak against Articuno and Malters, only against Zapdos would he have an advantage. Issei. That's true, but it's also wrong, a forced contract can forcibly take out the power of a Pokémon, letting out all its potential, in the hands of an evil person, its dark side increases its energy, it becomes more erratic, not suitable for summoning Pokémon's legendary but to fight. Therefore the problems will be more, and with Celebi that is problematic, since another ability he has is to control the plants around him, not to mention that he does not have movement limitations like birds when making a contract. Riaz. There is also that the cow's rocket is advanced technology, you can use it to facilitate your fight. Isaka. Let's hope he doesn't, that could affect the timeline a lot. At that moment a tremor would be heard, with this the sky would turn grey, lightning would be heard, and explosions would occur in the sky. Burst. 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 Issei. It seems like we already know where that guy is. Isaka. He had the Pokémon Celebi in his possession, he may have arrived at the place he wanted to go in this timeline long before us. Riaz. Wait, look at that. The giant vine had captured Articuno, and two vines rose to attack two people who looked like Zapdos and Malters. Isaka. They are the legendary birds. Issei. They signed contracts. Riaz. But in the story we saw in the museum they never did it. Isaka it may be true. But if they had no other choice. Riaz. A. What are you saying? Isaka. 
Think about it, that guy called Alpha was for the birds, what if he caused these results? They say. It definitely had to be him, I feel the presence of the subject called Alpha strongly, I can even feel Celebi's pain, he is forcing him too much to the point that he screams in agony. Burst. Shock. Isaka. This power does not seem to be one that a Celebi can exercise. They say. Maybe if he takes it out by force, clearly this is an assumption, but Alpha may arrive at its destination long before we realized we were in this field of grass, by doing so, he made the three birds stop their fight to fight him, but Alpha having more advantages in his powers free of limitations by the contract, managed to capture Articuno, seeing this the two birds. Zapdos and Moltres may have made a truce, since there was no other way out they made a contract, of course all this is just an assumption, considering that he arrived before us. Isaka. So far this is the best we have to explain the situation. Burst. Rias. I think I understand now how it all ended like this, but with whom could those birds make a contract? Burst. Issei. Crouch. They immediately listened to Issei, dodging a lightning bolt. Burst. Isaka. I think I know who the only two people who were trying to stop their fight to save their kingdom, Akeno Himajima and Ravel Phoenix. Issei. That idiot doesn't know what he's doing by causing so many changes in the timeline. Luja. Issei, do you have a plan, or will we intervene directly? Issei. I got it, Yusaka, I need you to cover your ears please. Isaka, It's a bit strange to ask me that right now, but you must have your reasons, so I'll listen to you cover his ears. Issei. Riaz, listen to me carefully, now that Yusaka is not listening to us, I can talk to you without restrictions, we cannot stay without doing anything, so you have a great role here. Riaz. I hear you, what do you want me to do? Issei. To end a forced contract the only way is to kill the trainer, but you won't be able to use a Veltal, he absorbs the vital energy of both a human and a Pokemon, you would kill them both, and Celebi is our ticket back to go to the future, so it all depends on Ho-Oh. Rias. But I haven't even tried using it. They say. You will have to learn as you go, Ho-Oh, in addition to being a flyer, it is a fire type, it is the perfect Pokemon to counterattack Celebi. Rias. And what will you do? They say. Support the priestesses with Yusaka, if this continues everything could get worse. They say. Well, Ho-Oh I hope you can guide her along the way. Ho-Oh. I'll calm down, this situation must be fixed soon. They say. Riaz beat ya. Riaz. I'm leaving then. Riaz would quickly run away leaving Issei and Yusaka alone, she would uncover her ears as Riaz had left. Yusaka. He went to take care of Celebi, right? They say. Did you hear? Yusaka. Not at all, but it's obvious since he's moving away from this place. They say. Then Yusaka our job will be to support those two from the air. Isaka. I understand, you will take out your Luja. They say. I knew that you were not someone simple, you said that you don't even remember, who the hell are you and what have I forgotten? Isaka. I'll tell you when we get out of this situation, so you'll have to stay alive until then. They say. Well then, so be it. They would both look at each other to advance towards where the priestesses were fighting. Issei. Let's go Luja. Luja. Go ahead. Issei immediately transformed using the power of Luja to take flight towards the priestesses. With Rias. This was soon found in a forest, it was huge and above all it transmitted negative energy. How oh, oh. The plants here are full of life, but at the same time aggressive, it means that he is here. Rias. Let's stop him so that all this evil ends. Deep in the forest, Alpha was seen attached to a tree as if it were nature itself. Alpha. I already have a bird I'm missing too, but wait, what is this there are two more people not three one entered my forest smiles, then perfect, if you want to stop me you will die brutally the birds are mine haha. Ha. Chapter 11. Purification. Burst. Burst. Shock. Burst. Two huge vines were being hit by fire and lightning with great force, but they were simply regenerating from the damage. The Keno. Ravel be careful. The third vine appeared behind Ravel, this one was going to be hit. Ravel. Close his eyes. They say. Dragon charge. Immediately the third vine was destroyed by the dragon charge blow. Ravel. Opens eyes who are you? Ravel was shocked by the sudden appearance of the subject, but immediately the Pokemon Zapdos and Moltres reacted. Zapdos. Luja. Akeno. What? Moltres. He also made a contract impossible. Ravel. That's the legendary Pokemon Luja. They say. Are you both okay? Akeno. Be careful ahead. The two remaining vines were going to hit Issei, but at that moment a voice was heard clearly. Isaka. Few fulets play Dragonite. At that moment the two giant vines were cut into pieces. Issei. We have to get out of here quickly. Zapdos. Sigello. Akeno. Okay. Walters. You two ravel. Ravel. Good. 
The four of them flew away from the place quickly, heading towards an island in the middle of the sea, while the vines seemed to slowly regenerate. Luja. This place seems fine. Ravel. Who are you two? The Keno. Ravel calm down. Issei. You are the priestesses right, Ravel Phoenix and Akeno Himijima. The Keno. That's right, how do you know our names? At that moment the two birds from the mental world raised their voices so much that the four could hear. Molters. What are you doing here Luja? Zapdos. I thought you had retreated to the bottom of the sea. Luja. I guess you don't need to be an expert to know that it's because of idiotic celebrities. Zapdos. I see, the Luja of the future. Molters. That explains a lot. The Keno. You really are the Luja protector. Luja. That's right ladies. They say. We come from the future involuntarily, of course we end up getting involved in trouble because of Celebi and the guy called Alpha. Ravel. Zapdos and Molters told us about that Pokemon during the battle. The Keno. Can you explain to us what's happening? They say. Mainly he came to take the legendary birds. The Keno. We realized that. Isaka. How was your meeting with him? The Keno. We were about to stop the fight. The birds fight was destroying everything, and their battle people were being hurt, we went for answers to stop their battle. Upon obtaining the two answers for this, we chose the one that required the sacrifice of our lives. And when we confronted the birds face to face, a green light appeared in the middle. The guy you call Alpha appeared, the birds were shocked when he saw them, and when he saw them he just smiled and made a forest grow with his powers instantly. After that he took very aggressive actions, the birds fraught, but he used all kinds of skills that we didn't know about. In the end he defeated Articuno, the two birds, seeing this, made a truce. We, who had been hiding since the fight against that guy began, were found by the two birds, then they offered us a contract in exchange for helping them, we accepted immediately because as their contractors, they stopped their fight. However, his power over nature was superior, he controlled plants from an enormous distance. And no matter how many we destroy, they grow back again and again, there was no end. Bravel. That's true we can have the power of a legendary Pokémon, but... The Keno. We are not warriors, it is our first time using our fists, instead of our brains. They say. I understand. Luja. You damn birds fighting again they do not take humans into account, they must know that this world is not theirs. Zapdos. And where were you supposed to be, you are our mediator when these conflicts occur. Luja. Where do you think, idiot, my past self was hurt, and knowing their quarrels, talking wouldn't fix this. Walters. Luja although it is difficult for me to agree with Zapdos, I guess this is not the time to argue. They say. I agree we must organize to fight, soon they will attack again. Isaka. You're not thinking of instructing these girls in combat in such a short time. They say. There is no choice. We have to hold on until Rissa finishes off Alpha. Isaka. Size you're right about that. They say. You two listened, I can't teach you something complicated, but something powerful enough to defend yourself. Akeno. We will be willing to help. Ravel. Yes, we will listen to you. They say. Well, I'm going to teach you how to summon a Pokemon weapon. Isaka. You said you wouldn't teach them something complicated. They say. It's the least complicated thing I can think of and strong enough for them to defend and attack themselves. Ravel. What are those Pokemon weapons? They say. They saw them in action when Yusaka cut those vines, Pokemon weapons are the personification of Pokemon in a weapon, when using them the power increases x10, even if they don't know how to fight, they will be able to defend themselves well and attack equally. Yusaka. The main problem is that in order to summon them, an inhuman and insane concentration is required. They say. You must concentrate, imagine a weapon that suits your current form, taking into account the state of your body, since only you know the state of your body while you are transformed. Yusaka. Issei, they're back. At that moment more giant vines were approaching the island, the forest area was expanding. Issei. Listen to me Yasaka and I will keep those damn vines at bay, you guys try to do it. Ravel. Agreed. Akeno. We will help them as soon as we get it. Issei. I hope so, Yasaka let's go. Issaka would stand next to Issei to take flight towards the vines. Issaka. Do you think they will succeed? Issei. Yes and only for a special reason in between. Isaka. I understand. Issei. Dragonite. That form. I saw it somewhere. Isaka. You still haven't managed to remember. Issei. No, but I know I know you from somewhere. Isaka. I was going to talk about this when we got back, but since you're remembering, you better keep it in mind now, the night of the fox on the moon and the baby in the water. Issei. Impacted to you. Upon hearing those words Issei quickly remembered and realized the identity of the woman. Isaka. 
You decide now after hearing that conversation now in the middle of the battle or we leave it for later. Issei. We leave it for later. Isaka. Bye. Issei. Yusaka. I'm really sorry. Isaka. I don't blame you, but we'll talk later. Issei. Gen. The vines approached the island faster, their obstacles were Issei and Yusaka who were in the middle waiting to attack them. Isaka. The two of us can't handle so many, you will take out the Luja Pokemon weapon. Issei. I won't use Luja. Isaka. Hey then, who? Issei. To an old friend closes eyes. At that moment the vines were in front of Yusaka and Issei, quickly Isaka with her two swords, quickly cut the vines to defend Issei, but she could not block all of them in the end one of them approached Issei, but when she was about to touch him. Issei. Awakened creator of the Rayquaza skies. An explosion emerged from Issei's body, it only destroyed the vines and did not harm Yusaka. Immediately she could see it, her eyes trembled as she contemplated it, a state of pure power, a world threat, a being that is beyond, a mythical category Pokemon. Urquaza. Issei. Pokemon weapon emerald sword it's time to start the real fight. With Rias. He was in his transformation state with a Veltal, flying in the great forest created by Alpha. She was looking for him in a hurry. And? I can't distinguish Celebi's energy, it can be felt throughout the forest. Ho oh, oh. It seems like it's everywhere. And? That alpha guy must be around here, I'm sure of that. At that moment, vines, but these had sharp spikes, came towards the estuaries from all directions. Ho oh, oh. Be careful. And? Laughs. Rias. Vital absorption wave. Immediately a crimson aura would come out of his body, and a shock wave would be generated causing all those vines to die, not only them, the trees, bushes etc. Ho oh, oh, That was effective. Why? But not enough. Upon hearing Eveltal's words, the plants were quickly seen regaining their vitality and shape. Ho oh, oh, Monstrous regeneration speed. And? I know a Pokemon with a faster speed than this, even so for Celebi this must cost a lot, I think Celebi must be suffering from agony as we speak, everyone who uses this power must be expending inhuman amounts of energy, Alpha is forcing a lot to Celebi, even us legendary Pokemons have a breaking point. Rias. That's why we must hurry. But before Rias could finish speaking, the trees literally bent, making a path. And? The energy I felt all over the place now I only feel in one direction. Ho oh, oh. We can say that it is clearly an invitation from the enemy to enter their territory. Rias. I don't know how the others are, time is crucial, so I will gladly accept your invitation. She deactivates her transformation and begins to walk along the path that it appeared. With this A. He was cutting into pieces all the gigantic vines that came, the speed at which he tore the vines apart was overwhelming, as if it would only take him a second. Isaka. They don't stop growing, even their growth rate is getting faster. Issei. I know dragon cut. The wave of energy would be sent horizontally, tearing apart the vines. Isaka. That will slow it down, with the power of a mythical Pokémon, you shouldn't be able to destroy them so that they don't regenerate. Issei. I could but everything would blow up in several kilometers, and unfortunately Rissa's is in that direction. At that moment a scream was heard, Issei quickly through the heightened senses in his transformation could see where they were coming from, they came from the cage that held Articuno captive. This cage rose into the sky, and the vines were shown to merge with its plumage. Articuno. Aya. Issei. This is very bad. Isaka. Because, what did you see? Issei. Alpha sees through the plants and realizes that Celebi's power over the plants alone cannot compete with mine, so it seems that he will use Articuno as a battery. Isaka. What? Issei. Just as you hear it, if I'm right the vines from before will be nothing compared to the ones now, they will be more dangerous. At that moment the vines turned blue, they went from being gigantic to being colossal, much larger than the island where Akeno and Ravel were, and there were also a total of four of them. Issei. Should I won't be able to handle them all space cut. Isaka. I'll help you dual dragon cut. Two of the vines were intercepted, but they seemed to freeze Issei and Yusaka's body. They quickly used their energy to isolate the ice, unlike the other vines, these gained greater resistance. And while they were busy, two of the vines were going to crush the island like an ant, however at that very moment. Ravel. Pokemon weapon Phoenix Sword. The Keno. Pokemon weapon Lightning Spear. Ravel and Akeno shot out stopping the two vines, Yusaka quickly destroyed the first vine, and Issei followed him, Ravel had no problems since fire was the opposite element of ice, and Akeno had no problems either, she destroyed hers like paper. When the four of them finished they met in the air. Issei. I see that they made it in time before being crushed. Akeno. Really, the power increases x10. Ravel. It's incredible. Isaka. Issei, did you predict this? Issei. 
As I understand it, even in the present of our timeline, the job of priestess requires massive concentration, combined with great mental effort, naturally summoning a Pokemon weapon was the best thing I could teach them too. At that moment the energy began to accumulate. They say. Looks like we're not done yet. Bikeno. This has no end. Bravel. I agree. Isaka. I hope Riaz has already found Alpha. With Riaz. She had arrived at the place she wanted, she was in front of Alpha, he was embedded or attached to a gigantic tree in a disgusting and bizarre way, as if it were skin. Alpha. My guest of honor arrived, you know I should have made sure at the museum that you and your friends were really unconscious. Riaz. Release the celebrity. Alpha. I don't think so. You know. Now that I have a legendary Pokémon I can feel more clearly who carries one and who doesn't. You and your friends out there especially the boy, I feel like I won the lottery. Riaz. What are you planning? Alpha. With the power of Celebi I can go anywhere and at any time, I will capture the legendaries of each region, starting with the weakest to accumulate power and go after the strongest. Riaz. That's your goal, that's why you came for the birds. Alpha. Correct, the birds are the beginning, when I have them my strength will increase, I will be able to go after the creator trio, the cloud trio, then even with all that power, maybe I can face the dragon trio. Riaz. If you do that you will alter the timeline, you will damage the future. Alpha. For the cow's rocket organization, I am the future. Riaz. Issei is right, with people like you dialogue is a useless privilege. Alpha. That doesn't matter, now that you're here I'll stay with your legendary Pokémon. The vines quickly attack the estuaries. Riaz. I trust you mate. Ho-oh. Here we go. Riaz. Go ahead ho-oh. Quickly a circular wave of fire engulfed the rivers, destroying the vines instantly. By the time she stopped, Alpha opened his eyes in shock at her appearance, as it did not match the power that the woman gave off. Ho-oh. It's time to purify evil. Riaz. So this is my appearance with Ho-oh, not bad. Alpha. That Pokemon ha ha Gray. So these guys that are currently blocking my plan were the mishap you had, I understand everything. You are one of the people who screwed up the legendary dog's mission and Ho-oh, well it's never too late to get back something that should have been mine in the first place. Riaz. Words are unnecessary, I'm going to purify the evil right now. Chapter 12. This story will continue. Shock. Burst. Alpha. Damn stay still. The roots of the trees reached to the sky, thousands of them attacked a single person at once, that person was Riaz. Riaz. What's wrong, even with your skills this is the maximum you go, you can't catch this girl. Alpha. You'll see let's see if Articuno cools that damn head of yours. What they say. Akeno, Yusaka, Ravel and Issei were fighting against the thousands of vines. In that place where Articuno was, a scream was heard, they were forcing him more, draining his energy. Articuno. Damn AI I a stop. His screams of agony did not stop, he was suffering. Issei. It's stealing more energy. Akeno. For what? Ravel. I think that's what it's for. The roots grew from thousands to a million, all of them enormous, chasing a single light in the sky. Urquaza. Issei we must free Articuno, without his extra energy source he will be limited. Issei. It's a good idea, but the vines here won't let me pass. Isaka. Alpha is smart, keeps his extra energy source safe. Issei. I have a way. Akeno. We will support you. Ravel. Count on us. Isaka. I say the same. Issei. Well, I need time, can you keep those vines at bay? Isaka. Their attention is focused on Ria's, they no longer attack us with the same ferocity, we can definitely contain them. Akeno. Leave it to us. Issei. Fine, I'll be back. It would quickly ascend to the sky at high speed and would not stop there. Urquaza. What are you planning Issei? Issei. You should know. Urquaza. Performing a strike from space could kill Articuno. Issei. MMM. Urquaza. Tell me are you really planning to kill him? Issei. I don't want to, theoretically to get to it I will have to cross the colossal vines head on, they are too thick and hard like a concrete wall, considering that there are many of them it should serve to make the impact of Articuno less. Urquaza. Do you consider the gravitational factor, the speed and the speed of descent, those vines as hard as a concrete wall will be crossed like paper, you are going to kill him. Issei. Pokemon have bones. Urquaza. Claro. Issei. Then let's hope that in the worst case scenario I just break all his bones, it's a risky bet, but honestly my priority is not the bird, so if I kill it, I'm sorry Luja. Luja. The legendary birds were going to harm the world for their fight, from my point of view they are not innocent there is nothing to forgive, it is either Articuno or us. Issei. Well here we go. This one who flew at high speed, crossed the ozone layer and would reach space admiring the earth. Luja. 
You can see the target from here. Urquaza. I can observe everything under my sky. Issei. Here I come. The symbols on his body would slowly light up. Uja. Rikwaza one of the most powerful Pokemon and who defeated me in the past, at that time this attack was made from a lower height and it was still devastating, I felt like I was going to die, now that it is made of this height, how will it be? The result. With Rias. This one dodged a million roots that were coming for it. Ho oh, oh. Rias are you ready to fight back? Rias. Yes, I've already analyzed its movements, it depends a lot on its environment, Celebi was not made for close combat, so it keeps me at bay with these monstrous plants, that's why I'll take care of the plant sunny day. It immediately became too sunny, so much so that it began to damage the roots. Alpha. What? Rias. Too much light on plants is harmful, you never went to school idiot. Alpha. It doesn't matter I can repair them with more energy. Articuno was still screaming in pain, but Alpha didn't care. Rias. Close's eyes ready, ho oh. Ho oh. Definitely. Rias. It's time to purify evil this will be the first time I do this, I hope it works flare plus holy fire. His entire body would be engulfed in fire, and the roots would burn instantly just by making contact. Alpha. This is bad, I must keep her at bay. But at that moment in space, Issei was going to launch his attack. Issei. Orbital fall. An asteroid or meteorite, the typical speed of these objects in the inner region of our solar system, is between 20-30 km per second. However, unlike them, Issei using Rayquaza can easily reach this speed. Most of these meteorites disintegrate upon entering the Earth's atmosphere. But Issei does not suffer from this problem, since a protective layer of energy protects him, his falling body turns him into a sharp knife. The most important thing of all is that stellar objects such as meteorites, although the majority are destroyed upon entering our Earth's orbit, some cases, especially the largest ones, manage to come into contact with our soil. If that happens in minor cases the result can be three times stronger than a nuclear bomb, and that is only in the minor cases. At this point Issei's own body was three times stronger than a nuclear bomb. However, he could control the energy so well in that transformation that there would not be a huge explosion, instead the power of the explosion was concentrated in his forehead, and since his body was like a blade, it would cut everything in its path no he would destroy everything in his path. Isaka. The vines are increasing and growing more. Articuno. Aya. Ravel. He only has Articuno and he can produce these changes. Meanwhile, Rias was incinerating Alpha's roots, but he remained motionless, even the roots that reached and hurt him did not matter because he was regenerating, an ability that had Ho-Oh regeneration. Alpha. What are you planning that woman does not attack, maybe she is waiting for something. Rias. Not yet. I have to concentrate my energy more, I'll only have one chance to completely incinerate him, I want to make sure I do it clean and fast, I'm a newbie in fights if I get close and fail, I have no guarantee of having another chance with how cunning that guy is. Ho oh, oh. Good. Rias. Issei trusts me by giving me this part of the job, and I know he will do his part by supporting me when I least expect it. Alpha. Enough Articuno I will extract every last drop of your strength. But at that moment Issei came down at high speed, Akeno, Ravel and Yusaka could barely see, but the little they saw was Issei's body passing by their side. They immediately destroyed the giant paper-like vines and headed towards Articuno's cage. As soon as he made contact with it, Articuno was freed, the cage was torn to pieces, the vines that had stuck to his feathers drawing energy removed, but he was also injured by the attack, the attack was so strong that it literally sent him enormously far away in direction to the sea. Its body fell, sank and was lost in the depths of the sea, while the last thing the bird saw was sunlight. They say. I'm sorry Articuno. Immediately the roots were no longer regenerating, Alpha lost his battery, and the reaction of this continued to where Rias was. Rias. The roots are shrinking. Alpha. But what is this because my roots are withering? Ho oh, oh. This must be Issei's work. Rias. I won't waste this opportunity. With his body wrapped in fire, he descended from the high sky towards where Alpha was. Alpha. Damn Celebi give me more power. The roots began to grow, but the process was ten times slower than normal, their energy was pushed to the limit. And unfortunately they did not have time to grow in time to stop the rivers. Rias. You are better. Alpha and wait. By the time he blinked she was in front of him, her flame slowly engulfing the tree burning it. By the time it touched his skin and came into contact with him, his body began to burn instantly. Alpha. No. Rias. Pay for your sins. In funeral homes, especially cremation, a body is exposed to extreme temperatures of 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, the process generally takes between 1 and 3 hours, depending on the size of the body. Alpha. I can't. 
But Ria's was at a higher temperature than that, the fire surrounding it was 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which caused instantaneous calcination. Ria's. Pay for your sins from hell. Alpha could only watch as his body burned, he saw how his entire plan, like everything he achieved, was ruined and destroyed by these guys he didn't even know. Alpha. Because. That image was etched in his mind until his death, while his body burned in the fire. Rias. Because hell is what guys like you deserve. The fire spread burning the entire forest, Rias remained still among the flames. Two hours later. The fight was over, Yusaka was with Akeno and Ravel, while Rias had just arrived at the place. Rias. I see you're fine. Isaka. You too. Rias. Yes, Alpha was eradicated. Ravel. What happened to Celebi? Rias. It's here. This one who was hiding behind Rias' back came out to greet. Bikeno. So that's a celebrity. Celebi. I wanted to tell everyone thank you for helping me, Rias told me what that bad guy did and everyone's effort to save me. Bikeno. It's nothing, we couldn't stay with our arms crossed. Ravel. I agree. Rias. Where's is say by the way? Zapdos. Is looking for Articuno. Walters. The attack was too strong. But at that moment Issei lands on the ground, right behind Rias. Issei. Ja. Rias. Issei. Issei. Good job Rias, I see you did it. Rias. Did you ever doubt? Issei. No, but well, in the worst case scenario I thought of a plan to look for another Celebi, if you killed the current one. Celebi. Should I? Thank you for your honesty or feel upset. Isaka, Did you find Articuno? Issei. No, I used Luja, but no matter how deep I went I couldn't find it, it may be dead, when a legendary Pokemon dies an explosion of light occurs, its body disappears as if it didn't exist, it may have exploded and died at the bottom of the sea. Rias. Lightning. Issei. Don't be sad, a legendary Pokemon defies death, they can die, but also come back to life, thanks to the fact that they are an important part of the world, that means that they can appear in the future, in the worst case they will lose their memory of all these events. Rias. Well I guess in some way that's a relief it means everything here is resolved, right? At that moment Yusaka and Issei looked at each other with some complication, the same as Ravel and Akeno. Issei. This. Rias. What's wrong why does everyone get like that? Issei. No civilian of this time saw us, Celebi you are a Pokemon of time, how many changes will we cause in the future, if we leave things as they are? Celebi. More than 50%. Rias. Shocked but what does this mean? Akeno. Raises hand laughs it's for us. Celebi. The girl is right. Rias. I don't understand. Isaka. In the story we saw at the museum they sacrificed themselves to stop the fight between the birds, they died or should have been. Issei. Instead now, they have made a contract and have legendary Pokemon that gives each of them eternal life. Zapdos. In the future it says what happened to us. Issei. Only they disappeared as if they were erased from existence. Walters. Akeno and Ravel. Who told them the second option to stop the fight. Ravel. An oracle said that if we used our lives as payment the fight would stop. Zapdos. Then I know why we are not in the future. Walters. Me too you don't know anything about that ritual, right? Ravel. What are you saying he shouldn't stop his fight? Walters. Quite the opposite, the ritual will use their lives as payment to kill us by summoning a Pokemon with a power greater than that of the three of us, the legendary birds. Akeno. So all this time. Zapdos. That's right, they would stop the fight, but at the cost of our lives. Issei. Now I understand everything the three birds died due to the sacrifice of the two priestesses, that was the reason why the birds were not present in our future. Rias. But you said that a legendary can come back to life. Say, Maybe but how long do you think it will take? The process of resurrecting legendaries remains a mystery to this day. No one knows when a legendary dies and will be resurrected. It could be today or in a million years. Rias. Then what? Celebi. Changes in the future can be kept at 0% only if the remaining birds and priestesses die. Isaka. This is in bad taste. We can't do anything. Akeno. In the end we are going to die. Zapdos. Yes. Well. I want you to know that as my first contractor, even if I die I will not forget you as a sign of respect. Walters. The same for you Ravel in this short period we were able to understand a little of his motivation and feelings, and I apologize for all the damage we did to his people in our battle. Akeno. Issei. Go ahead kill us. Issei. MMM let me see no. At that moment, everyone hearing him say that couldn't help but shout. Akeno Ravel Yusaka Rias. W H A T E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E E I'm not one for killing beautiful women, and I have the solution to the problem. Ravel. 
Really? There is. Which one? They say. The most obvious of all. Long after. The view would show us Issei, Yusaka and Ria's eating at the same Gear City restaurant that they were the first time, Issei had Yusaka by his side while Ria's was in front, they seemed to be in the middle of a meal and conversation. And at that moment two people came and sat next to the river. Ria's. It's delicious. Issei. Good service Yusaka. Yusaka. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Ikeno. The future is amazing. These clothes are something different from what I saw in my time. Bravel. I can't believe how many things there are in the future, even the expressions of others are difficult to understand. Rias. Is it true that those two will join our trip? They say. That's right. Rias. Why? They say. Because Yusaka will educate them. Rias. And why is she coming with us? Yusaka. Come on, laugh, don't be jealous and share. They say. Sigh long story it will be for another day that I tell you. Yusaka. I still can't believe there were no changes in the future. They say. I'm very good at cheating death. Rias. I would never have thought of bringing the priestesses and the birds with us. They say. Yes, theoretically they should die and disappear without a trace, which we were able to imitate by traveling to the future, history marks them as dead by finding no trace of them, the battle we had is attributed to the birds, and in turn, the birds remain missing to this day. Isaka. In the end we didn't hurt the future or our present, it was a victory. They say. We were lucky, that's true. Akeno. I don't know how to thank you for that. Bravel. I'm the same. They say. For now I just hope they learn from Yasaka, she will teach them everything about this technological world. Rias. You know that. They say. Yes. Rias. Since I got a Veltal I haven't stopped seeing amazing things, and I've learned a lot of things thanks to you, this really is the best. They say. Smiles true and as a plus at least we finished off the cow's rocket in Johto. Rias. Well it helped that we appeared at the place and time we left, in the end all their forces were in the museum, with our power we neutralized them right away, they didn't even see us. Isaka. Fortunately we were fast, by the time the law arrived they arrested them all, already unconscious on the ground. Issei. From now on I don't want any more problems. Rias. Haha <laughs> with you it won't be easy. Issei. Well let's finish eating, our trip must continue. Urquaza. Haha <laughs> that's true. Luja. Without a doubt. Rias true. And? The future looks interesting. Ho oh, oh I agree. Akeno. Go ahead. Zapdos. I'm going to make my contractor stronger on this trip. Ravel. I will do my best to help. Walters. Don't worry, I'll help you Ravel. Isaka. Fufufu everyone seems very excited. Issei. Smiles. The journey continues, new bonds of friendship are made, and new adventures await. Because you never know what can happen in the future. Arc 1. The beginning of a great journey. Finished. Chapter 13. A story to tell. Arc 2. Starts. My name is Hayoto Issei, currently my life has been filled with great adventures and difficult moments, I am currently traveling the world with Rias, Akeno, Yasaka and Ravel, now our next stop is the Hon region, but the road may be complicated in more ways than one. Rias. What were you doing in Issei's room dressed like that? Yasaka. I just wanted to talk to him. Rias. Don't lie, you wanted to do something else. Isaka. How do you know I haven't done it already? Rias. You will be. Issei. Please calm them down. Akeno. I guess Issei is someone very popular. Ravel. That's true. Issei. And to think that we haven't reached home yet. Ten minutes later. Things calmed down Yusaka went to take a long hot bath at the hotel, meanwhile Akeno, Rias and Ravel were with Issei. Rias. Issei, are you going to tell me what your relationship with Yusaka is? Akeno. Hey what makes you say that, laughs. Rias. It's obvious that he has some secret with her, after the events that happened, things between him and her have a different atmosphere. Ravel. So that means they already knew each other. Issei. Yes, we have known each other for a long time. Rias. Why don't you tell me anything about that did you sleep with her? Issei. Well, things are more complicated than that, but yes, it's been a long time I haven't told you anything because I don't know how you would take it. Rias. Issei I know you are older than I could imagine, but I honestly gave myself to you knowing that you had done it before, I honestly don't care, I just want to know more about you. Ravel. The truth is that I'm curious. Akeno. Me too. Issei. If that's the case I'll tell you but I'll tell you in advance that it doesn't have a happy ending. Ravel. Agreed. Issei. It was a long time ago when the wars between humans and Pokemon had already stopped, so contracts between humans and Pokemon were already more frequent, I was a merchant who traveled from town to town. Ravel. In what region was that? 
I say. At that time the region still did not have names, the towns were divided, then one day at night in the middle of one of my trips, I met a beautiful woman. There he is. Yusaka right? I say. Yes but a smaller Yusaka, she told me. You're not very young to be a merchant, I laughed and told her that I have a contract, I may look like a child, but I'm actually older than that, we had fun beginning, and we talked more frequently every day I went to town until. There he is. They fell in love. I say. Yes it was inevitable considering the moments we lived together. Bravel. What happened next? I say. That's when I left the place before she declared her love for me, and before I regretted saying anything. The Keno. But why? I say. Because when you have Pokemon of great rarity that are capable of granting you eternal life, you know that the hardest thing will be to see the one you love age. There he is. It's true I guess you abandoned her back then, because it wasn't certain that she would get a very rare Pokemon capable of making her equal to you. I say. Exactly. The Keno. But I guess the story isn't over yet. They say. Yes I certainly left for a long time, I think I was a hundred years without seeing her again, it was then that when I returned after those hundred years, she had the same appearance as when I met her, it turns out that she had made a contract with Dragonite and therefore acquired eternal life. The Keno. You must have been happy about that news. They say. I was. Until I saw the ring on her finger. She had already gotten married. There he is. Wait Yusaka is married. I say. More specifically, she is currently a widow. There he is. But when did she get married and what happened to her husband? I say. Well, we caught up when we saw each other. It turns out that he made the contract 10 years after seeing me for the last time. He also got married 3 years later. I didn't feel upset or disappointed. After all, I was the one who left the place first. They even had a daughter who had been born recently. Bria Zakeno Ravel. What? I say. I knew they would react like that. The Keno. Yusaka has a daughter. They say. Yes. Rias. But what happened, where is he? They say. If you calm down and let me continue you will know. Rias. I'm sorry I just can't believe that someone like Yusaka has a daughter. They say. At that time I also got a surprise, I learned that currently her baby and daughter were with her husband, that by the way Yusaka's husband had made a contract with a Pokemon of epic rarity. Ravel. Wait Yusaka got emotionally involved with a person who wouldn't have a mortal life. They say. Yes. She did what no trainer in her situation would do. Ravel. And what did she say about the future farewell situation in which she would be involved? They say. He remained silent for a few seconds and then told me. What is the point of being immortal if you are afraid to live life, after that I remained silent, I did not know what to say to him, but she had already made her choice. The Keno. It's not so much her late husband but her daughter, she would also have to see her die. Ravel. Yes yeah, something like that it should be very hard for her. Rias because they suggest that he has to die, he could have suffered the same fate as his mother. Ravel. But her mother had extraordinary luck, you can't guarantee that she also had the same luck. The Keno. I think our doubts will be answered if we continue listening to the story. Rias. Right I say, continue. They say. Ha dot dot well getting back to the story, Yusaka and I caught up, in the end our relationship was that of two old friends, and that's how it should have been after all, now she was married, so we only limited ourselves to talking, laughing and having a great time as friends, it should have continued like that dot dot. But it wasn't, Yusaka still had feelings for me and I for her, in the end those feelings repressed and forgotten in the deepest part of our hearts, came to the surface, but we still didn't cross the line, until one night we were both looking at a beautiful shower of stars, it was there where our hands intertwined, our lips touched and in the end dot dot. There he is. You ended up sleeping with her, even though you were married and had a daughter. I say. I'm not proud, but I couldn't hide my feelings anymore. The Keno. What happened next? I say. Yusaka's husband had arrived with his daughter after a long time, but I couldn't stand to see her with him, so one night I went to Yusaka's room and told her I was leaving, she asked why, and I confessed that I loved her, but I couldn't see her with him. Ravel. What did she say? They say. He gave me a kiss and said see you soon, I spent another hundred years without seeing her. There he is. But you came back again after a hundred years, right? They say. Yes by then more things had happened her husband had been murdered 20 years ago in an internal power struggle in the town, since he was one of the candidates for leadership. Bravel. Wait, your husband died. They say. Yes it's funny, I had too many years of life ahead of me and he died before reaching old age, I'm not pleased with this fact, however the barrier that stopped the two of us from being together was gone, so we spent more time together, and we went to a festival called. The Night of the Fox in the Moon and the Calf in the Water. There he is. What a strange name for a festival. They say. 
It was a unique festival in that town that took place every so often, it was one of the most beautiful festivals I have ever been to, also one of the most unforgettable, at that time, everything seemed to be going well between her and me. Bravel. Sorry for interrupting you but what happened to her daughter, with her father dead I'm interested in knowing what the girl was doing. Bisay. She had made a contract with a Pokemon a long time ago, therefore she was out of the village perfecting her skills, and she was going to be there for a long time. The Keno. So you hadn't met her yet. Bisay. No nor did I have the opportunity, because at that time I was found by my brother, who was looking for me to fulfill a mission, the war between humans and Pokemon had ended a long time ago, but the embers of the flames of war had not yet completely gone out even after so many years. Rias. You had to leave again. Bisay. Yes. Bravel. But how long would you have to go to put out the embers of a war? Bisay. Back then the embers themselves were many wars, it was going to take a long time. Bikeno. How did she react? Bisay. He understood it easily, however he made me promise that the next time he came back he would act as if it were the first time we met. Bikeno. What why did he make you promise that? Bisay. Because we had so many unfortunate encounters, I wanted this to be the last one. Bravel. I see it was a way of telling you that you will stay with her forever, the next time you come back. Bisay. That's right. Bikeno. And what happened? Bisay. I kept my promise, I returned another hundred years later, three months before the festival, the night of the fox in the moon and the baby in the water, then I saw her, same body and appearance, I introduced myself calmly, although without saying my name, it turns out that at that time, saying your name to a woman you just met was seen as vulgar and inappropriate and vice versa for women. There was a four-month waiting time to do it. The Keno. What kind of rule was that? They say. Society changed over time, after all I know a time when a woman would be called a slut for wearing a short skirt. Rias. True there was a time like that back then, according to history, women wore long dresses. They say. Yes. I didn't like that time. Rias. Well back to the topic, how did they introduce themselves or talk? They say. We talked one-on-one, -on -one, without mentioning our names, although she didn't want to speak to me at first, over time I managed to convince her. The Keno. She played hard to get. They say. That's literally what I was thinking, but I felt like something was wrong. The Keno. What do you mean? They say. At that time I didn't know, but I just blindly went ahead without knowing what awaited me, I went on dates with her, there were kisses, and three days before the festival, we went to a room to join our bodies, it was there when I understood that I possibly made an incorrigible mistake. Rias. What do you mean? You had already slept with her before, what's the difference now? They say. That girl wasn't Yasaka. Bravel. What? The Keno. What are you talking about? Bravel. Wait, what are you saying how can it not be Yasaka? They say. The next day very early, there was a guard outside the room, it was then that a woman entered, that woman was Yusaka, it turns out that she had left the village for a long time on business, and when she returned she heard rumors that a man was dating her precious daughter. At that moment the girls covered their mouths and were shocked by what they heard. Rias. Don't tell me that. They say. Yes. The person who was identical to Yusaka, who I fell in love with. The person I dated, slept with and who I had taken her virginity from. Her name was Kunu and she was Yusaka's daughter. The Keno. That's it. They say. Yusaka was speechless, and so was Kunu when she found out about us, I knew that Yusaka had acquired a more mature appearance instead of her previous one, to avoid confusion with her daughter, but of course I didn't know that. Bravel. And since their names were never mentioned, there was never a chance to clear up the misunderstanding. They say. Exactly. Rias. And what happened next? They say. Naturally I wanted to take responsibility, but Kunu was devastated because she ran away from home Yusaka, and I chased her tirelessly when we found her she had entered the territory of a dangerous Pokemon. Rias. If you say dangerous it must be. They say. If that's what you imagine our battle was fierce, I don't know what happened to the Pokemon, but I managed to get out unscathed Yusaka and Kunu were gone, and I asked myself if I deserved to come back to be by their side after asking myself that. I told myself that wherever I go it caused problems. Rias. You left one last and final time without ever coming back. They say. Yes until I met her again. Rias. I'm going out to talk to Yusaka do you mind? They say. No go ahead. After his harsh words he left the room calmly. Bravel. I know Yusaka is traveling with us right now, but what happened to her daughter Kunu? They say. Yusaka told me that she disappeared many years later he didn't see her again after that. The Keno. And Yusaka didn't look for her. They say. She did but she couldn't find anything she also told me that she didn't have a contract with a Pokemon that would allow her to live forever. Bravel. Then she must be dead. They say. It's not safe to say either. 
The time I knew Kunu I know she's the kind of person who would go back to see her mother. Bravel. So it is possible that something has happened to him. They say. Yes. Bravel. How does Yusaka stay calm to this day? They say. He spent thousands of years in depression, loneliness and sadness, he had a lot of time to reflect over time he got rid of depression and sadness. Akeno. And loneliness. They say. Well now he's with me that one barely ended. Bravel. Are you planning to make her your lover? They say. I take responsibility for my actions and feelings, if Riaz has no problems with it, then I accept her with open arms to start together again. Akeno. You know, Issei, with all the power you have in your hands, I thought you were a different being from the rest, someone perfect, you have shown me that you are not perfect, you are human and you make mistakes. Issei. Lo si. Akeno. However you take responsibility for them, in that part you are a good person, and there are few good people in the world smiles. Bravel. True, in my eyes you are also a good person smiles. They say. Smiles thanks Akeno and Ravel, I appreciate it very much. Chapter 14. A story from the past. It had been two days since I told the girls about my story with Yusaka. Since then the relationship between Yusaka and Ria seems to have improved a lot. Currently we were continuing on our way to go to the next region, the trip was long, so there was still a long way to go to get there. Akeno. A question, why don't we use our powers to get there right away? They say. Because the word trip loses its grace when doing so. Riaz. Issei is right, the reason for a trip is not to get from one place to another quickly, it is to know new places, make new friends along the way, live adventures, because in the end, it is not the result that satisfies you but the progress. Akeno. Wow I have a lot to learn. They say. One of the things that immortals deal with is boredom and loneliness, naturally another immortal can satisfy the second, but the first if it is necessary to go at a slow pace. Isaka. Most of those who acquire a Pokémon that gives them eternal life, remain in constant movement. Bravel. Is it so important to keep moving? They say. I once met someone just like me, a boy he did not travel and stayed in the same place for more than 10,000 years, as a result his mental state was broken, he tried to kill himself, but I stopped him in time. Rias. Did you want to advise him? They say. No, the boy was a person who was not fit to have a Pokémon of that category, I prevented him from killing himself, because if he did he would take the life of the innocent Pokémon with him, in the end I taught him to break a contract, the Pokémon was free and left. Bravel. What happened to the boy? They say. He died, but like a normal person, he made his life and had a great family, some people are just not suitable for immortality, you have to keep in mind that keeping moving is good for your mental health, but not everyone is capable to keep moving. Rias. By the way, before we met as children, how long had you been in Kanto? They say. A long time, but unlike the others, today's technology allows you not to get bored. Rias. That's why you spent your time locked up playing video games. They say. Well, it wasn't like I could go out freely either, after all dealing with the government is a pain. Isaka. I agree. Bravel. It will be interesting to learn more about this world. When night came they would make a temporary camp and prepare food. Bravel. By the way, Issei, how many legendary Pokémon do you have? Issei. Riaz didn't tell you. Riaz. I tried, but every time I try to tell them something, my voice literally goes away. And? If you allow me to speak, I think that is because one of Issei's legendary Pokémon interferes when Riaz is going to speak. Uja. They probably don't fully trust any of you yet. Riaz. But I would never dare to do something against Issei. Uja. I know, but they still doubt. Issei. If they prevent you from telling them, it will also prevent me from telling them. Akeno. Then I guess we won't be able to know. Isaka. But what about this, we can't know in detail, but we can partially, what if we say the regions, and you say how many Pokémon you have from each region? Issei. I guess that should be fine. At that moment lights flashed on Issei's body. Uja. It seems that the others agree. Riaz. I guess we don't expect them to talk to us yet either. Uja. Certainly. Isaka. I'll start, Kanto. They say. I don't have any. Bravel. K Tal Cord. They say. Only Toluja, one dares. Urquaza. I guess the others won't mind to say saying our names since they know us. Akeno. Let's see Hon. They say. One, of course Rikwaza. Riaz. Sinnoh. They say. Only to one. Isaka. Thessaly. They say. I also have one. Riaz. Kalos. They say. I don't have any. Isaka. Hello. They say. I don't have one from that region either. Rias. Galar. They say. I don't have any Pokémon from that region anyway. Isaka. Paldia. They say. No. Bravel. 
then only four, I honestly thought Issei would have more. Issei. Even if I've been alive for a long time, I have to clarify that I haven't visited some regions that you mentioned, so I probably don't have a legendary Pokémon from that region. Bikeno. It is assumed. Rias. Your brother has traveled the world, do you think he has legendary Pokémon from each region? Issei. It is a possibility, however if it remains the same, his situation may be similar to mine, for example I don't have anyone from Kanto, but he does have one, in turn I have one from Johto, but he doesn't have any. As for Sinnoh, Hone and Unova, we would both have one from each of those regions. Rias. Then both would be even four and four. Issei. Assuming he hasn't captured any more, as I told you in the past, I haven't seen my brother for a long time. Isaka. In any case both of them would have the maximum number of legendary Pokémon in their bodies to date. Bravel. What was the maximum previously? Isaka. It didn't go beyond two. Bikeno. Then Issei would literally be visible to everyone. Issei. Correct. Rias. Of Issei's Pokémon we have seen two, two others are missing. Isaka. Do you think that you might get more by traveling around the world? Issei. Who knows, I hope not after all the appearance of legendary Pokémon is sometimes a sign of problems. Uja. Issei is right, most who enter the human world forget the rules of this place, because they have been in the Pokémon world for a long time, naturally this leads to chaos and lack of control. And. In the worst case it can lead to the destruction of an entire region or more. Issei. That's why we have to be careful, after all some legendary Pokémon are attracted to each other. Urquaza. That's true. You remember right. Issei. I know where we were going of course I remember it was the first time where you and I agreed on something. Rias. Is something wrong? Issei. Nothing. Thoughts of the past. At that Issei observed the stars. Bravel. I'm sure nothing will happen in Hone. Issei. Well honestly nothing should happen. Isaka. Maybe one of your Pokémon has to do with that region. Issei. Yes, but that was a long time ago, at that time Rayquaza was still by my side due to the forced contract, and I had to fulfill his role. Rias. What do you mean? Issei. Among the legendary Pokémon there are those who are called mediators. Akeno. Like Luja. Zapdos. That's right, Akeno. Mediators are fundamental to the Pokémon and human world. They are almost always the most powerful, if not always. Walters. Its work is varied, depending of course on the type of Pokémon. Issei. There are commonly Pokémons that come in duos and trios, Luja is possibly the only Pokémon that intervenes in a dispute that occurs in legendary trios. Rias. Why? Issei. Generally those that come in trios, the central Pokémon, that is, the mediator, is in charge of resolving the disputes of the other two. Ravel. Something like talking. Zapdos. For some that is so. Molters. For others it's not that simple. Issei. Their jobs are different, for some resolving disputes mean stopping a fight, naturally the mediator's job is seen when words are not enough. Ravel. You mean fight. Issei. Yes usually, since the mediating Pokémon is the most powerful, it has the obligation to intercede in the fight. Urquaza. Although other times the role of the Pokémon is to maintain balance. Rias. How is it to maintain balance? And. For example, if something happens with the two Pokémon, the mediator Pokémon can intercede to maintain balance, that is, take care of its tasks. Issei. Although rarely the mediator Pokémon does not intercede, and this is just a voyeur. Rias. I see. Issei. As you see, having a legendary mediator Pokémon forces me to take on his role, back then I had to fight Rayquaza. Rias. Who did you fight against? Issei. Contra Kyager Y. Groudon. Isaka. I heard about them. Issei. Along with Rayquaza, the three of them are called. The Creator Trio. Isaka. It should be said that those three are of mythical rarity. Rias. What? Issei. That's right Kyager is recognized as the king, lord and titan of the ocean, since he created the Hydrosphere. Seas, oceans, lakes, lagoons, etc. Billions of years ago, Groudon is the one who created the continents billions of years ago and raised them above sea level, but the one who is at the head is his mediator Rayquaza, considered the protective deity of Hone and creator and king of the heavens billions of years ago. Rias. Wait billions of years. But our planet was already formed. Isaka. True, it also seems strange to me, normally the creation of our world was scientific, I would understand that the Pokémon world is different, but currently the history of our world seems to be attributed more to Pokémon than to science, it is as if both stories were mixed. Rias. True that is very strange. Issei. That's normal after all this world saw a second light a long time ago. Rias. A second light. Issei. They want to hear a story. My story. At that they all looked at each other and then looked at Issei to nod. 
Urquaza. Seriously, you'll tell them. I say. Yes. Sooner or later it will be known. Better that it is soon. I am going to tell you the story of how this world saw its end for the first time. This story takes place before the two universes collided. When planet Earth was still a place full of common sense. I was in my last year of high school. The day when everything suddenly became hell. Ollie. Our parents want you to improve your grades. They say. I have an average of 6 and I can pass, what's the problem? Ollie. Size the problem is not the average, it's that it can be better. They say. What's the point? Volley let's be honest, we're in high school, college is what truly defines your future, the only thing you have left in high school are good or bad experiences. But you have them left. Volley. So tell me this, without a good resume of activities or grades, how do you think you'll get in? They say. Admission exam. Volley. You realize you would literally have to get a perfect score. They say. Do you think I can't? Volley. So if you can get grades higher than 6. They say. As I said before, I don't want to. Bali. You really are ha well let's go back home. They say. I agree with you on that. Bali. By the way, have you thought about what you are going to study when you get to university? They say. In fact, I've been thinking about it a lot, but there still isn't a race that catches my attention. Bali. Well, you still have time to think about it. By the way, what are you doing tonight? They say. Nothing. Why? Bali. According to scientists tonight there will be a unique event that happens every thousand years. They say. A unique event, perhaps an unusual meteor shower or the passing of a meteorite. Bali. Scientists say it will be something visual in the night sky, like a lunar eclipse, but it is not an eclipse. They say. Who else will go? Bali. Kiba and Tsubaki Shinra. They say. Don't tell me that. Bali. Yes, it is as you think. They say. Kiba finally declared his love for her. Bali. Well as much as declaring herself no she to him. They say. That's it. Bali. You had to be direct with Kiba, I mean he has lower man sensors than anyone, he didn't realize it unless they told him and look, Tsubaki has been very obvious with her behavior. They say. You're right. By the way, we'll go in part to prevent Kiba from messing things up. Bali. Practically. They say. That being the case, naturally I can't miss it. Bali. Then decided. They say. Yes, something tells me that this event will be unforgettable for everyone. Elsewhere. Astrologer. How strange. Scientist. Is something wrong? Astrologer. I think the telescope is poorly calibrated. Scientist. But it was calibrated yesterday and I verified it perfectly. Astrologer. Well, it's very strange, but it's definitely out of calibration, otherwise I can't explain why the star I've been observing for days has disappeared from the sky, and in its place, there are four stars almost together. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.